Hey everyone, welcome back to another Kevin's Creations here on Geektopia Island. I'm Kevin. I'm Cardwell. And today we actually have a fan made or fan requested video that we wanted to make and it is a Wanderer deck. So we're, we're going to delve into Wonder for a little bit. I know we don't normally do that, but we wanted to and they wanted to, so we're going to do it. Yep. Uh, before we get into it guys, we just remind you that we do have a Patreon. The link is down below. Go check it out. See what you like, see what you don't like. It really just takes an extra dollar to give us some level of support. We greatly appreciate it. With that, the deck is requested to be built around Rhea and all that she can do and like vampires in general, but mostly mo mostly about Rhea. And so we made a deck called Symphony of the Night. Because if you're Castlevania fans, yeah. you know. Vampires. Vampires. Yay. Hey! So Rhea, the fourth daughter of the Mikage, is our ruler. And she is the old school ruler from I did back in the day. Yeah. It's been a minute since we used her, but she's all about her mystery counters. So judgment is black, black, and one, and energizes for a black. At the beginning of the game, put a mystery counter on this card. And you can activate to put a mystery counter on this card, so you just tap, put a mystery counter on it. And then uh, at the beginning of the game, you put two mystery counters on this card as well. So start of the game, she gets three mystery counters to use to do whatever you want with. Um, but you have to have cards that use them. Yeah. And guess what? I know it's weird, but old old rulers didn't have extra decks with them. <laughs> yeah, they I know. Just came she just with stuff. She just does her normal stuff. Um, so she judgments into a 12-12 flyer, which is pretty good. Yeah. And then automatic trigger when this card enters the field, you put three mystery counters on this card, and then you can activate, tap, remove a mystery counter from it, destroy target rested resonator or destroy target resonator. Yeah. So she can just kill a dude for removing counters. Yeah. I bet. And then her, uh, she has an auto trigger as well. When she enters, it's called Eye of Ragnarok. You look at your opponent's hand and choose a card. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, your opponent cannot play that card with the same name. So you're like, cool, I don't want you to play your Lorites until the end of your next turn. Yeah. So you just look at their hand and you're like, don't play that card. Thanks. Simple as that. Yeah. She's super simple in what she does, but she's very effective at it. And the, of course, our first resonator. I forgot there was no other. <laughs> yeah, there's no. There's no decks to go no through. Decks to go through. It goes <laughs> just straight to the resonators. And of course, we have Mikagi Rea, one of the new ones in the new set, and she's insane. So what she does is she's a one drop quick cast four four, vampire flying. Enter. Search your deck for a darkness card and put it in the graveyard. Then shuffle your deck. Simple as that. Vampires you control have drain, and then whenever this card is banished, as additional cost of a mage art or effect of a mage art put this uh put the card from your graveyard into your hand so the fact that you can just keep going at it with her and putting all the, all the cards that you want in the deck is ridiculous yeah a big part of this deck is based off of that Rhea and what her ability is of putting things into the graveyard so we we did as much as we could to utilize that yeah. so we'll show you what we're talking about oh yeah and the next dude we're going to show you that does that is shade envoy of darkness he is one of my favorite cards ever printed in this game He's 2 drop 6-6, six, six. Uh, activate rest, you banish this card, this card deals 600 damage to target J Resonator and you gain 600 life. And then automatic resonant, resonance, which is when a darkness stone comes into play, it triggers. You can pay 3 black if you do put this card from your graveyard into your hand. So Mikage Rea can go put him in the graveyard so you can automatically have him there to always trigger the resonance. Yeah. Because we have all just darkness stones mostly so you get... You always get the resonance trigger, so you can be like, hey, cool, I need this dude now. Thanks. Sounds good. Now, of course, Lorite, because you're playing Wonder and you might as well have it, right? Mm -hmm. If you remember this bastard, he's a one green quick cast, <laughs> one two, doesn't, the stats don't matter. Because when this card enters the field, cancel target, activate or automatic ability your opponent controls, and then that's all you need to know. Yeah. The other stuff is for uh, what's his face, we don't care about him anyway. Yeah. But, yeah, to be able to stop your opponents everything it's just this one of the strongest cards yeah, ever. i mean we're playing black green so you have to play him because it's he's just that good yeah um we actually are playing three colors black green and white because they're just a really strong combination they're one of my favorite combinations and my boy gil lapis a super of maddening power he has a black white and one for a six seven he's got will of despair which is kind of a thing but it doesn't really matter yeah um he's got precision which a lot of people forget when this card enters the field, search your deck for a light or darkness chant with total cost one, reveal it and put it in your hand, then shuffle your deck. Uh, it affects the chance you control cannot cause you to lose life. Damage causes life to reduce, not loss of, lo not loss of life. Yep. And then continuous, he gets plus one, plus one for each other resonator with will of despair you control. So if you play more of them, they can pump each other up, but that's that's kind of a meh ability. He's really there to search for any of the spells that I have in the deck, except for like two. So. 
That's his purpose. And those one drops are very powerful, for yeah. sure. Now, of course, we have Lucifer, leader of the Fallen Angels, also one of the newer cards. It's a 7 9 for 3, 2 dark and 1, flying, Fallen Angel. Pay 1,000 life, this card gains plus 2, plus 2 until in a turn. Seems steep, right? But you pay 2 black and a 1, pay 1,000 life, discard a card, put this card from your graveyard into the field, and then at the end of the turn, gain life equal to the amount of life you lost this turn. So therefore, you gain your 10,000 back no matter what. So he's basically a free dude, After especially after Rhea. You just plop him in the graveyard and yeah. you're done. Again, he's another one of the targets for Rhea to go get free, because you that way you always have the ability to get him. Yeah. Um, and then next up is Mikage Sejiro. He is the new vampire guy, and he is totally ridiculous. Yep. Um, green, black, black, black. If for a 12 12 flying precision, because why not? Uh, when a resonator dealt damage by this card is put into a graveyard, put it into the field under your control. It gains darkness in addition to other attributes and vampire. Yes. Remove a stranger from the resonator from the graveyard, this card gains eternal. We don't have those, so you're not going to be able to get that, unfortunately. Um, but he enters, you may pay any amount of life. This card deals damage, deals that much damage to target resonator your opponent controls. So with this card coming into play from the graveyard or getting returned or however you play it, you enter your like, cool, pay seven, kill your dude, it becomes mine. And if you have Makage Rei in play, this dude gains drain so you don't lose any of that life. Yeah. And even more so, if you have Lucifer in play, you would gain that life again. I was just thinking that, like, yeah. <laughs> Because you basically, you lost that life technically, so therefore you gain it back, no matter yeah. what. So you would still gain that life again. So if you have Lucifer and Mikage Rea, you get to gain double life, which is kind of silly. You know, you just remember those double dream <laughs> yeah. triggers, like old times. Yeah. And our first spell, of course, is Soul Hunt, so one drop as well. It's a chant, and it's also a major art now, but each player banishes a Resonator, then each player discards a card. And for you to be able to just banish Rhea and then get her back and then flash, and it's just silly. Yeah, when you're like, ah, cool, I don't lose value out of my dudes, great. Yeah. Uh, next up is Look at Corruption, because this card is that good. Yeah. Uh, one black, look at your opponent's hand, choose a card, total cost four or less, they discard that card, and you can awaken it for black and one and get a five or over two. But most of the time, you're just gonna get a four or less. And in this deck with Rhea, your main like, goal is to try to get rid of their hand because you have this and the next card that we're talking about too. Um, and it's just discard spells. Yep. And this one is a Glint of Insight. It's a one drop. It's a chant. Name a card. Your opponent reveals their hand and discards all cards that share the same name as it. Remove two mystery counters from your J Ruler. This card gains Remnant until in a turn. And Remnant is basically you can cast it from the graveyard. And with Makage Rea, it says any darkness card. So you can put this in the graveyard, and if you want to destroy their hand immediately, then you just do all that fun stuff. Yeah, so if you know you have the mana to play it, you can be like, cool, look of corruption, play a Makage Rea, go get this, and then just be like, hey, I'm going to eat your hand. Yeah, because I can't. Completely destroy it. Uh, next up is Flourishing Hope. It is one white quick cast. Target J Resonator gains. This card cannot be destroyed until the end of the turn. Then remove this card inverter from the game. And it turns into Burgeoning Despair, which is a black and two quick cast. Uh, it can only be played from the removed area. And target player banishes two resonators. So this card, being able to go get this card with Gil Lapis. Mm -hmm. So far, every spell we've talked about, you can go get with Gil Lapis. Yep. And all of them will help you some way or somehow. A lot of people hate this card, and I don't know why. It's one I, of the most powerful cards I really ever. don't know why they don't like this card that much, because I think it's fantastic. We always played it in, those, in this set because it's just that powerful. Yeah, if you've seen any of our old brawls for sure, it's just a game changer every every time. Yeah, and Flourishing Hope part, you can save your dude from final battle. So you're like, cool, Th no, no, thanks. Yeah. All right, a time of a part of true power, what it meant. It's a darkness and green, remnant, and then as an additional cost to play this card, banish a resonator, so hopefully uh, Makagi Rea. Put tar darkness resonator from your graveyard in the field, that's pretty much anything that you put in with her. And then you just loop that over and over. And it has Remnant, so you just keep on doing that. Yeah. Your main one you want to use is Mireya, but don't be afraid to use your other ones because Shade and Lucifer both have a way to come back from the graveyard. So yeah. you don't really lose that much value. You just have to pay extra. Exactly. Uh, next up is the End of Friendship. It is a black and green quick cast mage art. Uh, as an additional cost to play this card, Banish the Resonator. Again, hopefully it's Rhea. Uh, your opponent banishes two resonators, so we're going to be killing their dudes as best as we can, easily as we can, by not really losing value ourselves, because Rhea just does a lot of work for you. Yeah, and the fact that it's quick cast is ridiculous. Yeah, and each time you play the new the Rhea, you go get a new card to put in your graveyard. Yeah. 
And if anything, it's always like, kill that resonator. You're like, okay, well, in response, I'll just kill my own dude. You sack two dudes. <laughs> yeah, great. Thanks. All right, and of course, we have Rune <clears throat> Story. It's a black and a green quick cast. Choose one. Your opponent banishes a resonator. Or you can flip over two revealed stories, which you don't have in the extra deck. Or put a target resonator from the graveyard into your hand. Cool. And then if you, Or cancel target spell unless your opponent pays one. Super value for just one look, two mana. Yeah. It, it's a very good card because it kills a dude or returns a dude or makes them not have something. Yeah. And the final card that Gil Lapis can go get, and probably one of the most powerful cards I've ever seen printed, is Final Battle. A black and X. You may pay two life rather than pay one up to X times to play this card. J resonates your opponent's control, gain minus X minus X until they return. Yeah. So you just play Gil Lapis, you go get Final Battle, and you can clear the board whenever you need. And if you have a Lucifer, then you get to get all that life back at the end of turn. Yeah. Just kind of silly. You get it for free. So thank you. Don't don't get crazy though, because if they kill that Lucifer after you final battle, then you're kind of out of luck. Yeah. But it is what it is. That is it for the deck. The stones are really simple. They're all Darkest Magic Stones, or they count as Darkest Magic Stones. So we first got the Killing Stone, which uh, if you're not playing Fox, it comes in tapped, but you can pay three life and it comes in play untapped. So, so done. Sure. And it's a green black stone. Uh, and then when this card is put into the graveyard from the field, your opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So it, it is there for that, but meh. Meh. Yeah. Um, we have the dark, the Magic Stone of Heavenly Rift, which is the white black stone, and it counts as Darkness Stone for shade. And then Magic Stone. Of the Black Silence, and it counts as the Black or Darkness Magic Stone, and it's green black. So we got the easy 10 stones because you're just playing green, black, white, and mostly you're just playing green, black. And that is it for the actual deck, guys. We have honorable mentions because we don't really do sideboards anymore, and these are a couple of cards that I thought about putting in a deck just because they're pretty strong for what they do, but they don't really need to be main board. And the first one we got is Light of the Sacred Spirit. It is one of the new ones, and it is a group, uh, white quick cast sword art. Choose one. If you control Lars, you can choose both. Uh, remove target resonator with 900 attack or more from the game, or search your deck for a five hero resonator and reveal it and put it in your hand. So if you use this, you definitely then get the ability to use the new Ferusia, the new black green uh, vampire girl, because she's also a five hero. So you can be like, hey, cool, go get her. Yeah. But sounds good. The next one is Gathering of Fairy. It's a one drop. You gain 1,000 life. This is there to help you with Final Battle. It'd be like, give me free 10 life to count Final Battle. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and then last is Evil Elemental Uprising, which is probably going to be needed in Wonder because graveyard shenanigans are everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's one black quick cast. Remove all cards in your opponent's graveyard from the game. Players cannot chase this card. So they can't do anything about it. They just have to lose their graveyard. Yep. And it's also gettable by Gil Lapis. So. All of those cards are really good to use in Gil Lapis or with him, but this deck looks really super fun and we are going to play it in one of our brawls soon, so keep an eye out for it. Um, and thank you again for the for the uh, deck tech and wanting us to do this. And if you have any more, hit us up. We greatly appreciate it. And we'll see y'all again next time. Goodbye. Also guys, we just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to keep up to date on all our future content, make sure you click that bell. It'll give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. We love you.